This course is Fundamentals of Telecommunications Part 1 and this is the first video course in the core training series. In this video we're going to cover the public switch telephone network and plain ordinary telephone service. And before anybody starts saying, well this is old stuff, we don't need to know this, it's all going to be voice over IP, well take a look at this graphic. This is a picture of an adapter for voice over IP at a residence. And if we look at the back on the connectors here, well we've got the power connector, we've got a jack to plug an Ethernet LAN cable into, so this is what the IP packets will go over. And what's sitting beside it? A plain ordinary telephone service jack. The whole idea with this adapter is you plug a regular telephone into it and it acts pretty much like a computer and does all sorts of functions like voice digitization and packetization and it runs the RTP protocol and SIP and all this stuff that you learn about in uh, the voice over IP series but it's got a POTS jack on it because the last three feet in this story goes to a regular telephone so this discussion of POTS, not only does 99% of the network still run on plain ordinary telephone service, but even if we go to an all voice over IP story, there's still going to be countless POTS telephones plugged into adapters, and so you're going to have to know about POTS. And not only that, the history of telecommunications is all built on top of plain ordinary telephone service. So no matter what you want to understand, POTS is the place to start. Well, let's jump right in and get started with a basic model for the public switch telephone network, the PSTN. If I wanted to draw a picture of the PSTN, I'd probably start with a telephone. Telephones are connected to telephone switches using two copper wires. Some jargon and buzzwords you'll probably hear. The building that contains the telephone switch is called a central office and the building that contains the telephone is called a customer premise so you could call the telephone a piece of customer premise equipment if you really wanted to when i first started working in this business i was never really sure about the word premise nor how to spell it and i didn't have a spelling checker on my computer so i had to actually go down to the library and get out a book that lists all of the words in the language and how to spell them and what they mean and look up the word premise and it turns out that it comes from British real estate law and what we're discussing is the contract of sale of an immovable good, a building. And the building is the premise of the contract. Therefore, if you have one building, it is a customer premise. If you have two buildings, they are customer premises. This is the most commonly made mistake in the telephone business, is referring to a single building as a customer premises. Wrong. Everybody makes this mistake. You hear cops on TV shows saying the suspect was on the premises. No, the suspect was on the premise, unless the suspect walked from one building to another, then they were on the premises. It does me good to get these things off my chest. The two wires that are used to connect the telephone to the telephone switch are called a loop. And you'll also hear it called a subscriber loop, or a serving loop, or a local loop. But most of the time, they're just called a loop. Why do we call them a loop? Well, it comes down to the question of how do you indicate from the telephone to the telephone switch that you, as a user, want to start communicating. What do you do? 
sometimes people say pick up the phone and then I can say well just picking up the whole phone doesn't do anything you have to pick up the handset and leave the rest on the table that's called going off hook because the handset used to actually be on a hook inside the telephone there's a little switch and I mean interrupter kind of switch that's normally open so those two wires that are connecting the telephone to the telephone switch are normally not connected together and when you go off hook the little switch closes connecting the two wires together now over on the telephone switch the thing that terminates the two wires is called a line card this is a little module of electronics often there are a bunch of them on a card and they plug into drawers that slide in and there are racks and racks and racks of them that make up a telephone switch but it's a little collection of electronics and one of the functions of that line card is to put voltage across the two wires and voltage is like pressure this is the thing that can force electricity to move around and for those of you who like details, it's minus 48 volts. Now, when you're on hook, the little switch inside your telephone is open. When you go off hook, the switch closes. And at that point, the voltage that the line card is putting across the two wires can then succeed in pushing electricity or electrons around in a circle or in a loop. This is why they're called loops. What we're discussing here is called supervision. Supervision means regardless of to whom you wish to speak and regardless of what you're going to say to them, how do you indicate to the switch you want to start doing all of this stuff? And this is called loop start signaling. You close the little switch in the telephone and then current can flow around in a loop on the two wires. Now over at the line card, they can tell that you closed your little switch to start current flowing around because they've got a relay. And what a relay is, is a switch with an electromagnet. Did you ever fool around in uh, grade school with magnets and pieces of paper and iron filings? And if you wrapped a wire around the magnet and then connected to a battery, the magnet worked a lot better? Well, that's what a relay is. The, the two wires, which are the loop, would actually be wrapped around a magnet. And then there's a switch sitting on top of it. And when the electricity starts flowing through the wires, the magnet would pull the switch closed. So they can tell on the line card that you closed your little switch on the telephone and started electricity flowing around in a loop. That's how you indicate from the telephone to the switch you want to start communicating. How does the switch acknowledge that request to start communicating? Well, they put a dial tone on the line. Assuming you've paid your bill recently, of course.